Magnets are present in many devices of everyday life. In refrigerators, in electric motors, in bicycle dynamos, on bulletin boards, in medical instruments, and in computers as guideways for reading heads. Such magnets, so-called permanent magnets, consist of a metal or ceramic material containing iron or cobalt. The strength of these conventional magnets barely amounts to one-half Tesla. Recently, much stronger permanent magnets have been made from high-temperature superconductors consisting of yttrium-barium copper oxide. A prerequisite for the magnetic properties of these materials is that the temperature remain below minus 183 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the material becomes superconducting. If the material is cooled down to its transition temperature within a magnetic field, the superconductor traps the applied field, thereby becoming magnetic itself. In this way, superconductors can trap magnetic fields up to 16 Tesla, making them the strongest permanent magnets presently available. Strong superconducting ring currents circulating without any resistance enable the material to trap magnetic fields permanently. The special magnetic quality of superconductors is determined by the size of single crystals. Therefore, scientists make a big effort to grow single crystals as large as possible. But it's not a simple task to make large single crystals of yttrium-barium copper oxide. Grain boundaries would interrupt the superconducting current flow. At a grain boundary like this, the superconducting current flow cannot cross into the adjacent grain. At the Institute for Solid State and Materials Research Dresden, a special melt texturing process is used for the production of superconducting bulk material. A research group is currently investigating melting and crystallization processes of these materials. Phase diagrams give important information in order to optimize the production process and to further improve magnetic and mechanical properties of the material. The initial ingredients are powdered yttrium-barium copper oxide and yttrium oxide. Further additives like metal oxides, platinum and silver enable the pinning of the magnetic flux and improve the mechanical strength of the material. First, the powders are precisely weighed in well-determined ratios and then thoroughly mixed. It's important that all components have the same optimized grain size. For this reason, the mixture has to be thoroughly ground in a ball mill. Then the mixed and ground powders are pressed into molds similar in size and shape to the final pieces. Once the yttrium-barium copper oxide crystals have grown, they become too brittle for subsequent forming. A small seed crystal is now placed on the mold to produce the desired orientation of the new crystal which will grow from the pressed powder.
Afterwards, the molds are exposed to various temperatures over several days. As the mold heats up to 1000 degrees Celsius, a series of chemical reactions takes place until a framework of a new non-superconducting phase and melt has been formed at 1020 degrees Celsius. A very slow cooling down process then follows. The cooling rate is only 10 degrees per day. Only then can the superconducting phase grow into a large single crystal. What comes out of the furnace now has got what it takes to become the world's strongest permanent magnet. One can clearly see that the growth of the crystal has followed the orientation determined by the seed crystal. A look into the microscope reveals the microstructure of the material. The matrix of the superconducting crystal contains small inclusions of a non-superconducting phase. They are smaller than one thousandth of a millimeter. The material has to be magnetized in order to become magnetic. That means an outer magnetic field has to be applied which will then be trapped by the superconductor. The superconductor is placed a few millimeters from a conventional permanent magnet and cooled down in this position using liquid nitrogen. Below a temperature of minus 183 degrees Celsius, the material loses its electrical resistance and becomes superconducting, thereby trapping the magnetic flux of the outer field. But the effect endures only as long as the superconducting state of the material is maintained. Superconducting magnets promise interesting applications in bearings and guidance systems. The levitation effect on conventional magnets is not only without contact and friction, but also self-stabilizing. Superconducting magnets could greatly enhance the efficiency of electric motors. A new kind of rotation bearings is being designed, consisting of a cylindrical magnet used as an axis. It remains stable and frictionless while rotating within a superconducting hollow cylinder. Other applications of the new levitation technique are conveyance systems. Of course, it remains questionable whether people will breeze along storefronts someday. More probable is the breakthrough of superconducting magnets in small-scale and sensitive conveyance systems as demonstrated in these clean rooms.